What is going on, people? This is the first live stream on this channel, and God knows when. What we're going to talk about today is the process of analysis and research. Because I had this comment on the channel this morning, and it's real funny because I have been doing um, social experiments since 2009. And one of the things that I find to be interesting is more people are not utilizing social experiments. People are not utilizing, um, they're just not getting into a deep analytical groove, so to speak. Because um, one of the things that happens is when I have my people who don't agree with me, they typically don't agree with me based upon their feelings. There's no research. There's no analytics. Let me show you something. Let me show you something real quick. Right. What the heck? Hold on. Ah, oh, there it is. Uh, all right. Here's the price of Bitcoin. And I have been watching the price of Bitcoin for the last six months. I haven't been talking about it on YouTube, but I've been watching it and I've been observing it. And I've noticed that Bitcoin has been because it started right here. Actually, it started if you can look at this like you, you see this, but this is where it started. And it started this decaying orbit and then it did this and it's just been on this decaying orbit because when I made my prediction that Bitcoin was going to go under $20,000 it wasn't because well I'm just going to say some stuff to say it on the internet like I've been literally watching this for six months and then I noticed then it dropped then it dropped and it's in a decaying orbit and pretty much what you're kind of seeing back over 20 is the consolidation, the crypto bros and everything. They're pushing up the market, but it's going to go lower. And this isn't something that I just pulled out my ass. Right. And I have people who want to, you know, bet me because someone said, you know, I want to take this bet because it seems like a good lick. And I'm like, people, how many folks are actually doing um, research because uh, there's something else too that I want to get into. I want to get into the ism. I want to get into the ism. So once again, and this kind of goes back to deep level of research. Okay. Like right now, all right, <clears throat> this is what's going on right now. Intellectual property school, because I've added some more stuff to it. You can get in. And the link is in the description box. And at the end of this live stream, it'll be the first comment. You can get in using the promo code creator, get 65% off. There is no discount for the payment plan. And this is one of the things that's going on, how to create an offer that makes a lot of money. And part of the thing is we have to get kind of deep into this, right? So this right here is probably an hour of training, right? For you to do the homework correctly, for you to actually do it in a meaningful manner, it's going to take you quite a while to do the homework. However, if you do the homework correctly, 
this is going to greatly benefit your channel or your your podcast or your Instagram page, whatever you, you want to do. This is going to tremendously benefit whatever you're doing. And I, I know I have a lot of people because I'm running this uh, pre-launch special where I'm actually I decided to add more stuff. Because, like I said, this this right here is, you know, if you, you're a regular person with a job and you don't have as much free time as I do, this is going to take you some time because I don't have a job. So I have all day to do this stuff. But for you, someone with a job, you're going to have to do this after work. And the sooner that you start, the sooner that you start, because I'm not going to lie to you, participating in the digital economy the intellectual property school. It's a long-term play. It's not, um, when I came to YouTube, I worked on my YouTube channel for months before I made a dime. So you're looking at a six to 12 month journey before you start making any money. And I can tell you it will be worth it if you go ahead and do the right level of research and you set yourself up correctly. Also, Let's get into this. And this is very, very important. All right. Home economics. All right. This is part of the intellectual property school. You get access to home economics. You got a lot to go through. So instead of waiting, and I know a lot of people are going to wait until the 29th and the 30th to jump in, but what I'm telling you is don't do that. You want to jump in as soon as possible so you can go through this process and start getting, you know, because one of the first things that I'm doing is you've got, aha. Uh -huh. Okay. It did not. Let's see. Let me get in there. Let me show you. Actually, let me do this. Hold on a second. This is, this would be much better. There we go. Hold on a second. There we go. All right. This is part of intellectual property school. All right. Home economics. Look, look at all this. It's going to take you some time just to get through home economics, which is the foundational course. Because here's the thing. I don't want you to go ahead and get an intellectual property school, then go ahead and start creating some digital assets and start making some money and be living paycheck to paycheck. That makes no sense, man. So what I'm telling you is to go ahead get into intellectual property school, get into home economics and begin to do your research because this is a very important part of your success. It's a very important part of your success because he here's the thing. And this is why I speak the way that I speak about certain things like, Um, many people on YouTube will do what was considered a seven day challenge, right? Or they may do a 30 day challenge based upon my statistical analysis. That's not enough time to get enough data samples and data points. And this is why I talk the stuff that I talk because I know that that isn't correct. That's not going to get you what you need to get. This is the long-term play. And, you know, 
I'm about to show you because I'm about to close some of these windows. I'm about to show you how I came up with 81% of America making $35,000 a year. I'm about to actually show you the process. So hold on a second. All right. First of all, how many people are employed full time? Very important to know. So we have 1.2 million people employed full time. How many people employed part time? So we have about 24 million. So collectively, that's the 160 million people we have in the workforce. What is the the average salary of a state government employee? 31,000. That's the average salary of a state government employee was the average salary of a federal government employee at that fed level so it seems to be toward the higher end working as a federal employee What is the average salary of a retail worker? And this includes, you know, average salary of a retail worker is thirteen fifty per hour. Okay. 1350 per hour. So let's go ahead and see what that is per month. 1350, 13. It's not even 13, it's 13.05 times 160. It's $2,000 a month times 12. It's 25,000 a year. So we've done the federal government, we did the state government. Then this is what you got to do line by line. What percentage of the workforce works works for state governments? The public sector employs 20 million people. Let's see, federal government. See, this is what you got to do. You got to do line by line. 6%. Federal government has 9 million workers. So this is what you got to do. Line by line. Line by line. Item by item. And then you got to crunch your own numbers. And then you got to take notes while you're doing this. And this is how I came up to 81% of American workers make less than $35,000 a year. Just doing this. This is the kind of mind numbing research you got to do to get up. You know, this is how I come up with my analysis. I just don't come up on here and just be like, oh, you know, this, this, this is what I do. It took me like probably three hours to crunch out, ask all the right questions. And this is a really important Part of it, asking the right question. Big, big part of it, asking the right question, knowing what questions to ask. And that's one of the things that I do. 
I asked the right questions. I crunched the right numbers. And this is how I come up with my analysis. And I have a lot of people who want to challenge me because one of the things that I'm very solid on is my research. I don't bring anything to you that I haven't researched. I don't bring nothing to you I haven't researched. I've, I've read many articles, looked at government stats, went to the Census Bureau. I bring you nothing that is garbage. <clears throat> Let's see what's going on in the chat. Lucifer, thank you for the $10 super chat. <laughs> I'm not adding any music to this. All right, let's get rid of you. Boom. What's going on? What do you mean am I including children? You mean in the workforce? Children are not in the workforce. Uh, Christian BLS says workers 15 and over the median. That is an absolute lie. That is not true. That is not true. And you want to know the difference between median and average. Yes. Isaiah Harris, the strong cocaine is in the numbers. And th this is one of the things that I consistently do. I crunch the numbers. I look at the data and I have people who want to challenge me like the Bitcoin thing. If you've been looking at Bitcoin, like I, I, I've been checking out for a cryptocurrency for months, but I haven't been talking about it because I was getting my analysis and I could see it was in the decay in orbit. But one of the things, and this, this is something, this is kind of part and parcel with the training of the intellectual property school. What's there right now? Honestly, it's going to take you some time to do because let's talk about me in the car rental business because that was a complete, that was a complete mess. That was just, uh, it was just a big, big, big mistake. And I did financial projections based upon a lack of critical analysis, because if I did critical analysis of the re because, you know, it was hard to get information about the car rental business. It was really, really hard until I got into it. And then I got my numbers then I got my data samples. And I was like, oh, crap, this is not a good business. This is not a good business. Uh, I'm telling you, median income is not forty one thousand dollars. I'm here to tell you. It is thirty-five thousand and less. That is average income. Chilling. What's the best way to deploy capital? Uh, that's going to be another stream. What's up, James? Uh, all right. Do not ask me. Is this kind of business is a good business to get into? I don't know anything about the box truck business. I haven't really looked at it, um, so I cannot really speak upon it. So I can't say if it's a good business or not a good business to get into. I can say that so many people have gotten into the business that the price of box trucks is stupid. Let's let's go ahead. Let, let, let me show you what you, you if you want to get in the box truck business. Craigslist. see what we're looking at for box trucks oh man they didn't even put <laughs> they're not even putting prices here Here's one, 2014, 18,000. 2005, reefer truck, 25,000. 
for a 2005, for something that's close to 20 years old. Here's one for 14. Here we go. 2015, 79,000. Might as well just say 80. 2014, 50,000. So if you want to get in the box truck business, know that you're going to pay some stupid prices for these box trucks. Uh, I think inflation is going to tamp down a little bit. Uh, I don't know anything about real estate syndication. And shop people in South Carolina. Absolutely. Stay away from box trucks. <laughs> I think after this 10 year um, cycle, we're going to see prosperity. This 10 year cycle is going to be a lot of innovation. You're going to see a lot of innovation. You're going to see a lot of automation. You're going to, I think after this 10 year cycle of what we're going through, it's going to be quite good. Christian, go ahead and get your own channel because I told you that the average income is 35000 and you want to keep beating this dead horse. Welcome to the block party. I, l l let me talk about it. I do not buy any... I do have some gold from the storage auction days, but I'm not actively buying it. And I'm going to tell you why. You know how things would have, how bad things would have to get for silver and gold to be used as currency. We're talking rolling blackouts. We're talking an alien invasion. I mean, things would have to get really, really bad. Yeah, like this after this 10 year block, like this is what's going to happen. The global reset. What do I mean when I say global reset? If you lived in the house after this period, you would be living in an apartment. If you live in an apartment after this reset, you'd be living in the street or in the van. What people are being globally reset on lower economic levels. And this is going to go on for about 10 years. And one of the things that you have to do to combat this is make more money. And if you have a job, how much money you can make is limited. And this is like, I, I get this all the time in the comment sections. Everybody's not fit to start a business, but everyone's fit to invest. I want you to think about that. You're not fit to start a business, but you're in fit to put your money in someone else's hands and hope it works out. That's what investing is. When you invest in the stock market, you put your money in the stock and you hope that the people who manage the company do a good job. You have no control over that. You invest in cryptocurrency. You hope that it goes up. You have no control over that. So for me, I'm seeing that people who uh, Or anti-business because they're lazy. I'm going to say this. Years and years ago, when I was a regular person, I didn't know how to do all this stuff. I used to go to my job, then come home, and then sit down. I didn't know any of this stuff. I had to learn all this stuff. So if I can learn it, you can learn it. And I feel it's laziness. People are being lazy because they don't want to do the things that they need to do because during this global reset, during this recession, there's going to be an opportunity to make a lot of money. 
during this global reset, during these recessions, yes, recessions, because in seven to 10 years after this, we're going to have another one. You're going to have people who are going to become fantastically wealthy during the global reset. And they're going to be business people. They're not going to be someone dabbling in the stock market with 300 bucks per month in the stock market. That's not going to be the person. Now, if you have a position where you can put a million dollars a year in the stock market, you might see some appreciation that will make you millions. But once again, Mr. David White, cool, cool. Uh, I think infinite banking is a fancy marketing term. I don't really believe in infinite banking. Um, it's not something I would practice. James Anderson, I'm staying away from trucking. There's a company in Atlanta that manages one box tr trucks. They find the loads, get the truck and get the drivers. You as the only provide the capital. I'll pass. We have been through that hire car. We we still hire, still scarred by hire car. Uh, I am not messing with trucking, staying away from it. Joe William, what's curious? What's the ball park income that will not be bothered by the reset? It's not income. It is skill sets, computer scientists, data scientists, programmers, people who have skill sets that are really in demand. They're not going to be bothered by the reset. They're not going to be bothered by the recession. It, it's really about your, your re, it's about your skill sets. Uh, Chillin, you should start a business that's in alignment with who you are as a person. <laughs> Dude, people are screaming now. Here's something like in Sandy Springs. I've lived in Sandy Springs 13 years before I moved here. For 13 years, there was two. Well, I, I didn't even see homeless people. And then there was like two for the longest. There's like 50, 60 homeless people roaming around Sandy Springs now. That wasn't like that before before 2020. So people are being hit right now. They're being hit right now. Swaggy P, what would you recommend a 23-year-old that recently got a, a job in accounting for the recession? Start a business. That's what we recommend that you do. Start a business. That's 3PL. Stay away from 3PL. I don't even know what that is. All right, Mr. David White. Stand for the win. Here, he, here's the data scientist. Rasheen Taylor, the service-based business is the fastest money I've ever made. Still growing. Awesome. Awesome. Hmm. Suspending the gas tax. I didn't know about it. Lucifer, thank you for the $20 super chat. Facts. Every 10 years we'll shuffle people around. Yeah, because this is one of the things. Uh, on my other channel, I did a live stream talking about getting ready for the next recession. Because if you're not ready right now, there's nothing you can do to get ready. And I feel that a lot of YouTubers talking about do this to protect your money right now. They should be slapped into a coma. Because here's the thing. If you have a job and you don't have significant assets to the side, there's nothing you can do to protect your money. There's nothing you can do. All you got to you're going to be paying these high prices for gas, food, rent. That's that's where you are. Uh, I think in the next three to five years, we're going to have universal basic income and automation is going to be on steroids during this global reset. <laughs> uh, 
I know nothing about trucking, so I can't sp- say. People on paycheck to paycheck getting crushed. Absolutely. This is something I noticed today that people who have low wage employees, it's just like uh, musical chairs. Every time you go in, you see new employees. Homelessness in Phoenix, Arizona has skyrocketed. I saw a video that was talking about that. That how bad homelessness was in Arizona. So you, you're absolutely right. Oh, third party logistics. Okay. Like I said, I don't really know anything about trucking, so I can't really speak to it. Uh, here's the thing. As someone who used to be homeless, for someone who's long term homeless, there's either a mental illness or a substance abuse or a combination of the two. Gas tack, like, I didn't know that. Like I said. <laughs> I have no advice for the homosexuals, man. I have no advice. Uh, we will be touching on that in the intellectual property school. I recommend that f- instead of buying a book about marketing, you start a business and you start studying marketing for your business. You're going to learn a lot more, much faster. How much liquid cash would say it's a threshold for someone to be ahead of the curve for the reset? Uh, 30 to 40,000. That should get you through it. Well, hoarding cash is a good thing. If you can pay your bills and you have a lot of money in the bank, you're in a good position. I don't know how this drone delivery service is going to work. Like, give you an example. I live in a building. I don't know how drone delivery service is going to work for us. And I don't know how it's going to work for houses. I I, I don't know. Like, Like I said, until I see it, I'm not really going to believe it. Universal. Yeah, I think universal, universal basic income is coming. Vegas has a lot of homelessness, too. I did not know that. Oh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Let's get rid of this troll. Not even responding to that. Pretty much, California is the number one state for homelessness. Um, that's going to be kind of hard. Uh, honestly, do you think it's possible at the IP courses and their workload? That's going to be kind of hard. That's going to be kind of hard. <laughs> Brick and mortar is a different kind of animal, man. Pretty much, like if you're long term homeless, there, there's something else that's going on. There's something else that's going on. Uh, I have no idea. Like today, I just wanted to do this message talking about analytics, research, digging in the data, crunching numbers, because I have so many people who want to challenge me. And they haven't done the research. They haven't, they've not, they've done nothing. And it's just funny because every time I bring something to you, like, let me give you the process before I make a video, I'll go to Google and do research the topic and get the data points and just look at it. Like I can tell you right now, murder is going up. Suicide rate is going up. Homelessness rate is going up. And I'm not talking about by a little bit. I don't really know when they're going to implement the UBI, but I think it's coming at some point, three to five years. Man, like I said, this global reset, it's not going to, it's not going to be playing with people. It's not going to be playing with people. I 
I don't think we're going to have a, a total collapse, but it's going to be bad. Home, yeah, housing, like housing is going to be really interesting, but I don't think real estate is going to crash. I don't think real estate is going to crash. And I'll give you a reason why. Number one, we don't have enough houses for the people we already have. See, when they were building houses in 2008, 2009, we still didn't have enough houses. So I do see a correction in real estate because some of the appreciation was just stupid. Like I saw this house in Florida that they bought two years ago for 600,000. They was trying to sell it for 1.2 million. That's stupid. I see that going away. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know how this drone thing is going to work. We could see that. Congratulations for stop smoking weed. Congratulations. Energy stocks, I think that's going to be pretty solid because we need energy. Invest in things that people need. That, that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I will say being broke can be a big problem. I will say that. Long start. People don't do their research, man. That's why I'm making this video. People do not do their research because I get so many people who come for me based upon how they feel and their gut and all this other stuff without a lick of research. We're already in a state of hyperinflation. We're already there. Oh, really? Arizona's building. Okay. We will see. Yeah, like real estate is not going to crash. We're not going to see what we saw in 2008. There was this house around where I was living that sold for 178000 Three years later, that house was worth 500000 We're not going to see that. We will see some corrections. I think the car market's already come back to reality. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to see a big time crash like what we saw in 2000. Because the thing is, 2008, 2009, 2000, they were giving loans to people who were not qualified. <laughs> I mean, it was crazy. Pretty much. Um, Do you think the traditional family, what I see in that regard is that a lot of women are going to come down off their high horse because they're going to need help. I see that. Pretty much. Yeah, we will see a pricing correction, but we will not see another crash. I don't see that. Uh, I feel that, once again, you need to deeply research any business model that you want to get into. Because right now, someone was showing me something. It was Five Sisters Bakery. They're going crazy. The slutty vegan, she's going crazy. So, once again, you, you need to really focus and research in the arenas that you want to operate in. That's wild. Cars are still overpriced. Yeah, I haven't seen cars go down. Well, this is right now we, we're in a state where real economic factors are coming into the economy. 
you got a lot of people who don't have no money. They have no money. Uh, one of the things, like I am down to 10 cars. And let me tell you, selling these cars has been a pain in the butt. Like, um, I'll be straight up. I sold all my nicer cars to Carvana because people couldn't get financed. People didn't have the money. And fortunately, some of my nicer cars, they didn't get depreciated because I like I had a few cars that I just wouldn't rent to anyone else. And there was this BMW. I was able to sell a Carvana. I paid 15 for it. I sold it to Carvana for 14. So I feel the financial markets are going to be in a downward spiral for the next five to 10 years. No time soon. <laughs> uh, Y'all should check out the podcast. Not 80%. I don't think 80% of America will be in poverty. I feel that maybe 30%, which is extremely high. I don't see gas going down no time soon. Like I see gas going up really high this summer. And in the winter, I see it going up higher. Man, people can't drive five speeds. Man, that's wild. Rents going up. Rents gotten stupid all over the country. Pretty much. Remember, the things that you need will be very expensive. The things that you don't need will be on sale. Thank you, producer, for real. I mean, you know, we're, we're going to have a little more conversations about this. But one of the things that you want to do is position yourself to win. And that's going to be starting a small business. That's going to be it. Boston Dynamics is doing a lot of great things, and that's automation. Thanks for the $20 super chat. Yeah, like um, car prices, I don't see. Like right now, I'm going to share some with you. I ordered another Porsche. Well, I will be or like this is the process. I had to pay $2,500 to reserve a reservation to get in line. I had to pay $2,500 to get in the line. And I paid this like six months ago. And I get to order my car on the 27th. The supply chains, like uh, there was these rims. Let me see. Let me show them to you. Well, I thought I had a picture of them. Okay. There we go. Like these rims, I don't know if I'm going to get the rims or keep it stock, but if I order those rims, it's going to take six months for them to come in. And that's the car that I, I'm ordering Monday. And I may have the rims painted black. I don't know. I don't know. But that's what's going on at the top of the market. I like gas cars. I'm not, I haven't made the move to electric yet. Uh, I feel that we will test that line. We will test that. Well, there's plenty of videos on YouTube. You can run like, all right, you can run a YouTube channel and not show your face, but you're going to have to be crazy talented. You're going to, have to be crazy talented. 
<laughs> That's funny. You can build connections. I don't think I think there's going to be a food shortage in certain areas, but not overall, not everywhere. Um, once again, I don't really know. I'm not I can't really speak on electric vehicles because like everything I have, I, I have to put gas in. I, I really don't know about that. <laughs> Skynet. We will see. I was tired of the military. That's why I left the military. <laughs> Thanks for the $2. I don't know why people are obsessed with, show, with uh, it could be a lack of confidence. I don't know. I don't know. All right, man, that's it. So once again, go ahead, get into the intellectual property school. Start doing the exercises and the homework right now, and I will see you guys in the next one.